Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're we'll going to be going over is how to create subtitles for your game. So this is actually fairly simple so if I hit play I'll show you what we're going to make today. So if I were to walk over to the character over here and get close enough it will play a voice line and I've added subtitles to that voice line. So I'll be quiet now and we'll see what it says. Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year so if you do enjoy this video please do make sure to subscribe as it is the best way to support me and the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find it helpful. So there you go, that was the subtitles of the character in our game and this is very easy to set up and very easy to customise. So you can choose how many words appear on each line, the font, the size, where it is on screen, all of that great stuff I will show you how to set up today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. Now as some of you may be aware, there is a built-in subtitles function in Unreal Engine. However, I don't really like this system at all. It's not flexible, you can't move where it is on screen, change the size of it, change the Z order so if you have a widget on screen, it will be below the widget and then you can't see it. So I'm going to create my own system. So the way we're going to do that is what we want to do first is we want to create a structure. So let's go to our content browser and I've created my own subtitles folder and in here I've created a master folder. I'm going to right click in here, go to blueprint and create a structure and I'm going to name this one subtitle struct as that makes most sense for me. So we'll open that up straight away. In here what we're going to do is change this first variable name to be text and set this to be a text variable. So this is what is going to be said in the subtitle and we'll add a new variable and name this one time and we'll set this to be a float and that is when it's going to be on screen so this is what it's saying and at what time it's saying it very straightforward that'll make sense we can close this go back into our content browser and now we're just going to go to the subtitles folder not master we're going to right click go to miscellaneous and we're going to create a data table We'll pick row structure to be the structure we just made, which for me is subtitle struct there. And we'll press OK. And then I'm going to name this one sub DT for subtitle data table underscore. And then after this, I'm going to write what the voice line is for. So as I've not really got a name for my voice line, I'm just going to name it subscribe, as that makes the most sense for what the voice line is saying. But what you might do is you might have them coded like 3.1, 3.2 for example. But just name this what makes most sense for you. This is for a specific voice line. We'll open this up and then I'm just going to drag this out a little bit so we can see it a bit better. And then what we're going to do is add a new row to the data table up at the top there. We will click on this up here and press F2 to rename it. And we'll just name it 1. Make sure that you do name it 1. Nothing else, just 1. Then you can see at the bottom in the row editor we have text and time, the two variables we created in the structure. Text again is what we want to say and time is when we want to say it. So what you will also want to do is listen to your voice line and write down everything it says and write down the timings. So I'll show you one which I did earlier for this voice line. I've simply done at 0.3 seconds it says hey guys I'm Matt Asplund. At 1 second 0.21 it says and we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year and so on and so forth for the whole thing. So make sure you do this. You say this voice line at this time in the recording. Then what we're going to do is we can use that into this data table here. So the text for me said, hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund. And then the time, as you can see here, is 0 0.03. So the time here is in seconds, so we'll do 0.03. Perfect. Then we'll add a new one, making sure to name this 2. Set the text to be the next one. So for me, that is, and we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. And you can see that is at 1.21 seconds. So I'll add that in there, and then 1.21 in here. However, we don't want to actually do 1.21. What we want to do is the difference between the two. So this first one was at 0.03. This is at 1.21, but we want to get the difference between the two. So very simply, what we can do is 1.21 minus 0.03, which gives us 1.18. And you can do that maths in Unreal Engine, which is why I'm doing it this way. It makes it a lot quicker for us. We'll add a new row, naming this three. And as you can tell, we are just naming the row what number it is. That is very important 
for the next steps so that it is doing it in the right order and doing it properly. This next text for me is, so if you do enjoy this video, please do make sure to subscribe. And that is at 4.29. So we'll add the text there and then 4.29. Now we don't want to do 4.29 minus 1.18. We want to keep it on track with this. So it'll be 4.29 minus 1.21. So I can do that here and that will give us 3.08. So I hope this is all making sense. I've got a few more to go through. So now it's as it is the as it is the best way to support me in the channel at 804. So let's add new row four. Text as it is the best way to support me in the channel. Time 8.04 minus, and we want to go back on here, 4.29. And that is again just the difference between the two. So it is happening at eight seconds. However, we don't want to wait eight seconds from this one. We want to wait the difference between the two. So let's do another one here. Add row row five i hope you enjoy this video and i hope you find it helpful at 11.01 11.01 and then we want to do minus i think it was 8.9 was it 8.4 8.04 like so which is 2.97 and the final one here is 13.01 and you see that is blank so let's add and i'll add row six and this is just blank so i'm going to do a space and then the timing again was 13.01 minus, I believe it was 11.01. Yes, it was. And that gives us two. And now the reason why we've added this blank one at the end is this is where you want the subtitles to end, where you want it to be taken off screen, basically. So that is what that one's for there. That is to end the whole subtitles. So we will save and close this as that is all we need to do in here. That is now set up the subtitles with their timings. We'll close that. And now what we want to do is we want to create a widget to show the subtitles. So I'm gonna go back into the master folder, right click, user interface, widget blueprint, create a user widget, name this one W underscore subtitles. I'll open this up straight away. And then in here, I'm gonna add in a canvas panel. Then I'll also add in a horizontal box like so. And in this horizontal box, I'm going to get a spacer. Then I'm gonna get some text and then I'm gonna get another spacer again. I'm gonna select the spacer text and spacer and set them to be fill, and the text I'm gonna to set to the vertical alignment be in the middle. Then if we select the horizontal box, we can set the anchor to be the entire of the bottom row here, set the position Y to be zero, and the offset right to also be zero. You can see that takes up the whole bottom of the screen, and size Y I'm just gonna to set to 50. Then the alignment will leave the first one at zero and the second one, this is where you can put it on screen wherever. So if you put it at one, it'll be right at the bottom, two just above, three up further. You can see we can do this to be positioned wherever we want. I'm gonna put it at three as I think that will be good for me. Select the text box one final time and what we're gonna do is then also set the justification to be centered as well. So now this will always appear in the center at the bottom of the screen like so. This is where you can also change the color, the font, the size and everything of your subtitles and again obviously the positioning on screen as well. So you just do all that like you normally would with text in a widget as you can see perfectly here. That is gonna change it like so. I'm just gonna leave it as default though. With the text still selected, let's tick is variable in the top right. We'll then compile and go to the graph in the top right as well. We'll delete event tick, event pre-construct and we just want to use event construct. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new variable and we're going to name this one subtitles data. We're going to change this variable type from a boolean to a data table and we want data table row handle. We then compile that and the default value we're going to set to be sub dt subscribe or whatever is the one that you made earlier. And then the row name, just pick row one. Then we're going to create another variable naming this one index and this is simply just going to be an integer compile that and set the default value to one then we'll compile that again and what we're going to do now is we're going to drag in and get the subtitles data variable here right click on it and split the structure pin then out of the subtitles data data table so this top one here the blue one we're going to drag out and get data table row 
connecting that into event construct here. Now the row name doesn't want to be the subtitles data row name here because we want to change this to go through all of the rows to get the different subtitles. So we're going to get our index integer here. Out of this, we're going to convert it to string. And then from to string, we're going to go into row name to convert it to name as well. So I know that seems a bit long, but you can't go integer to name. You have to go integer to string, string to name for some reason, but that's the way that we need to do it. Then on out row of the get data table row, we're going to break and then choose the subtitle struct that we made earlier. So break subtitle struct there. And now you can see we have access to the data inside of the data table that we want. So we have the text and the time. So let's hold down D and left click to get a delay, connecting that into row found, and the duration is going to be time. So this is gonna wait until it needs to be put on screen and then put it on screen. And the way to put it on screen is get our text that we made variable earlier. And then out of this set text down here, connect that into completed of the delay and in text is gonna be the text from our break subtitle struct there. And that is perfectly gonna put the subtitle on screen. It will create the widget, get the row, get the text and the time for that and put it on screen when it needs to be. After this, we can get our index and get an increment int. So it's gonna add one to it at the very end. And then this can go back into the beginning. So we'll drag out this, get a reroute node and connect that into get data table row. Double click this, get another reroute node just to make it look nice and organized. So now it's gonna go through it all, add one to the index and go back here to go through to the next row. Now this is gonna go all the way through and once it's gone all the way through, it will still add another index. So for example, I have, I think it was eight rows in this. Once it gets to the ninth row, that will now not be found. So it will say row not found. So once it's not found, we've obviously finished going through all the subtitles. So we can drag out of row not found and remove from parent. As we finish all the subtitles, we can take the widget off screen. So we'll compile and save that. And that is now subtitles working perfectly for us. All we need to do now is just call this widget, but that is working perfectly. It's as simple as this. So to put them on screen, all we need to do is just go to where you're playing the sound. So for me, that is in this character blueprint here. When I walk close enough to it, it's just gonna simply play the sound here. This will probably be different for you, but just go to wherever it is you call the play sound node. After that, you're gonna to want to create widget like so, and we want to then set this to be W underscore subtitles. We'll compile and save. Because one thing we also need to do is open up this widget again. And if we go to the graph, we want to select the subtitles data and we also want to make sure it's editable and expose on spawn. Compile, save that, go back to the widget creation, right click on it and refresh nodes. And you can see we can now input subtitles data here. So we'll drag out of that and we will make data table row handle. And you can see we can have this here. So we're gonna simply just set this to be the subtitles we want. So for me, this specific one is sub DT subscribe and row name is gonna be one. So this data table part here is where you would change it for different subtitles. So if you want to make more subtitles for more voice lines, what you do is just create another one of these data tables, input all of the different values perfectly as you need here. And then when you go to create it, just put that different one in here. The row name is always gonna be one, so we start at the beginning, but the data table here is what will change depending on which one you have. And the return value is obviously just going to be add to viewport. And this will now work perfectly. So we compile, save, and close this. If I hit play and walk over to this character, you'll see we should get what we got at the start of the video, where it says the voice line with the subtitles at the bottom of the screen. Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. So if you do enjoy this video, please do make sure to subscribe as it is the best way to support me and the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find it helpful. So as you can see perfectly there, we got the subtitles on screen at the right time and it was all saying the right stuff. And if I to show hey you guys, again, I'm you can Asplund, see it's all coming on screen. I know I'm talking over it, but you know what it's saying. You can see the subtitles so coming on screen please perfectly like so. As it is the best way to support me and the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find it helpful. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've set up how to create subtitles for your game 
and we can create as many as we want and this is a very efficient system to then input all the text and the timings and it will come on screen and you can do this for as many different voice lines and subtitles as you want using just this one widget. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below. As you've obviously heard, we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. So any support is greatly appreciated. So again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.